All right, welcome back to game 10 of Lucid's 2022 tournament where we are playing Flegra. It was turn 50. Uh, we complete research in Alteration 8, definitely useful. Headed on to Alteration 9, uh, trying to heat up Raga here. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. I'm not expecting Atlantis uh, to contest that yet because this is the first time we've targeted that province. Uh, of course, we're trying to take a peek inside that fort, which we've hopefully cracked this turn. Uh, and then we witness and participate in a lot of battles this turn. Uh, so let's take a look. Some of these could be exciting. I, I recall there's a, I think there's a tyrant headed to a potentially dangerous spot. Uh, this is our pretender who is going against an undefended throne province. Okay, a lightly defended throne province. So we have a little bit of province defense here, a retreat, uh, as well as uh, one of Atlantis's cheaper casters here. Um, but yeah, this should be no problem uh, for our pretender. She's of course going through her script. Um, and then she should fly to the rear and then take out the mage. Yeah, so this should work out for us just fine. But of course, this is Dominions, uh, and it does not work out for us just fine. And instead, our Pretender is killed. Uh, so I have to say, obviously, I have seen these turns before. Uh, most of the battles I don't remember. This one I thought I did, um, so I was surprised <laughs> when our Pretender uh, didn't die. I'm pretty sure this is a replay bug, um, and that ultimately it was Frozen Heart uh, that took us out. Yeah, so... Obviously, this could have worked out in our favor. Was definitely expecting this to work out in our favor. We'll just go ahead and run through and make sure. No, actually, no, maybe it was not. Yeah, she did take, take some damage there. Uh, Atlantis's troops, of course, do hit really hard. Um, but yeah, this could have worked out for us. Yeah, you can see he was preparing to cast Frozen Heart, um, but he was interrupted. And like that is, you know, right? It's that narrow. Had he finished that Frozen Heart, uh, this battle goes a very different way. Uh, so this is a painful uh, and embarrassing way uh, to lose your Pretender, really just being too casual with her um, in general. Uh, the main thing, of course, is that, like, we just we don't have... Uh, any cold resistance on her, which is ridiculous because they're going up against late edge Atlantis. I'm going to say that I was planning on sending her home. I'm pretty sure that's true. Definitely it was on my mind, the fact that she didn't have any cold resistance. That's why we were sending her against a province where I wasn't expecting a lot of resistance. There was not a lot of resistance here. So, you know, this could have worked out, um, but it doesn't. So very painful result. It uh, just goes to show, right? You know, you sprinkle around just a few cheap mages and beautiful things can happen. Uh, beautiful for Atlantis, that is. Uh, terrible for us. So, you know, we've managed to lose Gorgeous George. It was always going to happen. Honestly, <laughs> kind of expecting it to happen uh, in expansion. Uh, so here we have an Atlantean army attacking in a location. I'm not actually sure where this is, um, but, you know, we're not defending, so that's okay. But this is definitely a pretty scary force here. This, I feel like this has been reinforced. We saw, like, this, yeah, this is this Soul Slay group that we saw before, so it's combined with uh, a lot of infantry. Uh, so over 2, that's not great. Uh, then we have an attack in another place. Okay, right, yeah. It, probably, there's a lot of lakes uh, on, you know, on the borders between ourselves and Atlantis, which is not great, right? Because this is a raid that they're launching uh, from inside the lake, and, you know, we don't have any defense here, and just, it really increases our surface area in terms of the number of places that we need to defend in terms of raiding. Uh, so we definitely need to figure out a plan sooner rather than later for, you know, how we're going to get underwater, uh, otherwise, even if we win, you know, on land, we can expect raiding like that to continue for the rest of the game, um, which can certainly be handled, but isn't ideal. Uh, so here we have a tyrant uh, with a buddy, and he runs into a serious army here. Uh, this is a lot more than we were expecting. Didn't really see any of this. This is potentially a failure of our underwater scouting, right? So it kind of looked like there wasn't a lot underwater. Uh, but that's because we don't have any scouts, I'm thinking, because that's really the only place, uh, I believe, that this could have come from. Um, this is extremely dangerous, but we still could be okay. Yeah, so we're starting to eat, I think, some soul slay attempts. Our magic resistance is only 21 here. This is a fellow that doesn't have an amulet. Uh, now, he has cast Iron Will. So, again, you know, 21, not great, but also not bad. And his lack of amulet, you know, is for good reason. I think this dancing shield is going to be pretty important uh, for a lot of Atlantis' troops. Now, if we get surrounded by undead, then it's probably just going to be a timeout scenario. Right, but we can see a cluster of Atlantis' sacreds moving up. You know, really hard-hitting two-handed weapons. Uh, so, you know, some extra defense against that, like, I think is pretty important. You see, yeah, we're taking a lot of damage here. Now, we have significant regeneration. 
Um, but, I mean, 87 hit points is a lot, but it's not that much. Like, you know, it could be more. These green lions also, you know, are just kind of excellent in general um, and probably are wrecking our armor as well, which, you know, could cause problems for us going forward. Now, luckily, right, uh, the mages have gone off script and they love to cast Paralyze instead of Soul Slay uh, to infuriate every um, Astral Mage in Dominions ever. Uh, so that's good for us in this case, although getting Paralyzed, you know, would not be ideal in this situation. But we're not really relying uh, on our defense here, which is a mighty one. So, you know, the difference between defensively, the difference between this guy being paralyzed and not paralyzed is somewhat negligible. <laughs> uh, so this is going decently well for us. Uh, the aw shield is not as good at cl uh, crowd control um, as the vine shield, um, but it is a lot more survivable. And you can see, like, there's a lot of guys flashing, right? Everybody that flashes there is somebody that isn't attacking because they got awed by that shield. So, you know, you, you face more attacks, but the shield is more likely to survive. And you can see we're still taking some hits. Um, but overall, this is looking pretty good for us. Uh, yeah, still sticking with Paralyze. Uh, let's see, Light of the Northern Star is up from Atlantis. That makes sense. That boosts uh, their Astral Mages' Astral Levels. So they're more likely uh, to penetrate. Um, but so far, working out for us. That said, like, there's enough Skeleton Generation here. I don't think that we really win this. Um, but we probably will force the Retreat. It's really just a question of, like, if we manage to escape, ooh. And somebody did eventually try for a Soul Slay, and it went through. And, you know, only battle round 30, right? We had another 60 rounds to go. Yeah, and you can see it's not very likely, right? They uh, had an exploding roll here, and we had a really low roll, and they ended up tied. But, you know, you face enough rolls, and things will go wrong. Uh, so, yeah, this is obviously uh, extremely painful for us. Uh, we also lose the supporting mage, but you know, it's mostly irrelevant. Uh, really, you know, the kit, the tyrant is hard to replace, but in a lot of ways, the kit is almost, you know, the worst thing to lose. Not to mention, they probably pick some of it up, which means that we're going to see it on some of their thugs. Uh, we do at least kill a decent amount of stuff, so we kill 20 sacreds. That's nice. You know, 20, just shy of 20 Atlantean infantry, that's not that big a deal. The Ice Guard are a bigger deal, but I mean, at the end of the day, if I was Atlantis, I'd be very happy making this trade. Uh, so we knew that, you know, we needed to get Amulet's Anti-Magic out. Uh, we miscalculated with that uh, underwater army that we missed, and we paid the price for it. So not the end of the world, uh, but we don't have a ton of tyrants to spare. Uh, so then we have, it looks like Vettiheim is coming out of Jabalba. Uh, to attack Utgard, and yeah, they bring in everything, it looks like. A uh, lot of cap-only mages, a lot of sacreds. Utgard is not here to receive this attack, though, so they must have felt it coming, and <laughs> they, they bailed. So, probably a good idea? I don't know. That said, I feel like the gate helped out significantly in the last battle that they had in this location. Obviously, when you ride out, there's no gate, uh, but Utgard, you know, not feeling confident there, uh, so bails out. And that is good news for Vettiheim, but, you know... They probably would have preferred uh, to kill a bunch of Garms. So, let's see. We have Alm attacking Atlantis. I definitely want the help here. I think this is just, yeah, their vampire hero who's immortal. Doing his thing. Uh, no kit. Making some skeletons. Probably not going to work out uh, against this little province defense. And, like, what is this? Soul Slay? No, this guy is just a water two. Oh, okay, he's just doing some quickness buffing. Uh, so, yeah. Probably hoping to get it on this thug, I'm guessing. This thug is actually not great uh, against skeleton spam, but, you know, with everything else that's here, I think they'll be fine. Uh, and indeed, Atlantis loses nothing. Uh, Alm also loses nothing because the guy's immortal, but, you know, it's yeah, not great. I guess if you're tying that force down from Atlantis, but I feel like that vampire hasn't done a ton. Um, so let's see, we have, yeah, this isn't, oh, this is a retreat, it looks like. Right? <laughs> Why are we casting spells? Because uh, it looks like the infantry is just bailing. Uh, and there's not enough infantry here. Uh, uh, ooh, magic duel. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so it looks like Alma's probably abandoning this fort. I'm guessing that this is that fort that Atlantis had cracked. Uh, so we'll have to see, you know, how many mages they end up getting uh, from that magic duel. I'm not sure why these guys are still doing things. Um, you know, yeah, like, I don't know. 
I would have expected them to retreat because they can't match a duel. So I guess, yeah, they'll make some iron darts. That's cool, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. I'd rather have the mages. Maybe they just feel they're not going to have... Oh, okay, they're trying to retreat now. So they're just trying to sneak in a couple spells, get a little bit of damage in. does look like it's actually going to work out. Atlantis is pretty slow. Now, of course, uh, these guys have taken some cold damage, and so they seem to be moving even slower than normal, potentially having been crippled. No, it looks like they just got slowed down. Um, but still, I think it's going to work out for them. Not really sure it's worth the risk, but, you know, I like the idea. Uh, so yeah, one of those black priests does get caught, um, and then of course they lose a bunch of these illuminated ones to the magic duels. They only get two forgiving fathers, um, but the forgiving fathers, you know, they're more expensive, definitely. Well, I should double check that. Yeah, significantly more expensive. Uh, so, you know, not a terrible trade. Still probably not in Ulm's favor overall, um, but of course the Forgiving Fathers, I believe, can only be recruited underwater. Atlantis does have plenty of underwater forts, but, you know, they are more limited, at least, uh, than uh, Ulm's Astral Mages. So, you know, this is certainly something that Ulm could lean into to really bully uh, Atlantis's use of their Astral Randoms. Um, but ultimately here, kind of a wash. Probably bad news for us, because I was thinking this fort was defended. And now that looks like probably there isn't a defense there, because otherwise they wouldn't have bailed out with their mages, uh, which means that that army is loose. Uh, so here we have a tyrant going after Raga. This is the tyrant I was more worried about. Uh, but of course, yeah, Atlantis chose not to patrol, so we're only up against province defense. Uh, this should go fine. Let's just take a look. Yes, you know, this is a guy that has an amulet of anti-magic, uh, so less, uh, less physical protection. Now, you know, these are, you know, kind of just the province defense guys, but still, they have the two-handed weapons. Yeah, you know, with the Soul Vortex, he seems fine. So, you know, at least against Atlantis, more chaffy stuff. Though you can see all the regeneration popping up for our guy. He is definitely taking a lot of chip damage. Of course, the Soul Vortex has actually pushed him uh, above where he started. Uh, but still, like, a little concerned, <laughs> right, about his lack of physical defense. But at least he's got that amulet of anti-magic. Uh, what did he, he probably also cast uh, Iron Will. Yeah, so he's up to magic resistance 25. Significantly better. Still not unbeatable. Uh, so we'll have to see how that one goes. Uh, then we have Atlantis attacking Ulm in a location. Uh, another little squad here. Yeah, definitely a difference between, you know, an uh, average game and this tournament game. Uh, pretty much all the players, right, are using all sorts of varied rating squads. Definitely very cool. Um, no defense here from Ulm. So, yeah, this will work out just fine. Uh, so Atlantis takes that province. No losses. Bad news for us, uh, but you do have to respect solid rating. Um, here we have Ulm rating pretty deep, actually, in Atlantis's territory. Uh, we have another immortal vampire. It's kind of late age Ulm's thing, lots of vampires. There's a fellow waiting here for him, though. Though so potentially he's a retreat, or I guess maybe just planning on doing mind burn. Yeah, he's throwing out some mind burns, which should be enough, actually, uh, against this vampire. So, yeah, I think Alma's going to, or Alm, I think Atlantis is going to do just fine here. Uh, and I was not correct. This works out for Alm. Yeah, I guess vampires do have uh, better than average magic resistance. Still not great, though. Uh, but, you know, there was only one mage. Uh, 30 hit points is a decent amount uh, to try to mind burn through. Still kind of surprised uh, that it went that way. Uh, but that is Dominions for you. We have another raid from Ulm. This is not looking deep. So, yeah, this is with a more regular squad. Also, cool little raiding squad. Got some sacreds, throwing out some luck. Some cheapish astral mages. Yeah, surely these can't cost too much with only two paths. Uh, and I think these are ghoul guardians, who are actually a little more expensive. Yeah, these guys are cap only, uh, though they're not sacred. So, a little bit of a heavier raiding group here. Um, but no defense from Atlantis. Uh, so that works out for Ohm. No losses there. Yeah, a lot of back and forth in this war in general. And we are not done with that back and forth. It's it's in full swing now. Hey, we have our first underwater battle. Uh, so this should be fine. <laughs> I don't know. We're, we are a poor amphibian. Yeah, there's not a lot of province defense here. A lot of the underwater province defense is really pretty awful, uh, even in the late age. Uh, so, yeah, we should be take out those mermen no problem. Or potentially they were tritons. Yeah, they were tritons. Uh, so, yeah, that works out for us. Of course, we still have to figure out, you know, how to take forts underwater. We need that uh, siege strength. We need to summon some skeletons. We need some death gems. Uh, this is our kind of wacky raiding group. <laughs> Air elementals, mass protection, flaming arrows. Uh, we are up against, it looks like just province defense. I think this is mostly province defense here. Um, hopefully, uh, no, it did trigger gem usage. Because <laughs> I was going to say, I don't actually think we need uh, all of our gems here. Uh, we should be able to handle this without it. But, 
gem usage is indeed triggered, uh, so we should absolutely slaughter these poor ichthyids. And indeed, we only lose three mouflon, which actually is <laughs> kind of painful considering. Uh, but yeah, really it's the gem expenditure that hurts more. We do have reloads there, though I'm not sure we have enough reloads of like all the right types. That rating group was definitely kind of, you know, cobbled together. <laughs> so uh, then we have another attack that we're making in a location. I think this is also a tyrant. You know, we are Flegra, late age Flegra. Tyrant's kind of our thing. Um, and there is no defense here. So we should take this no problem. Let's see if this guy uh, has... Yes, he does have an amulet of anti-magic, uh, so that is good news. And indeed, we take that with no trouble. Uh, then we get attacked in a location. We get pinged in a location. Uh, just a scout, and he's retreating, and we... Right, this is where we're sieging. Uh, so this is our army, and Atlantis wants to see what they're going to get themselves into. Uh, and yeah, we have a lot of stuff here, so we'll have to see if they you know, feel good about attacking that. Uh, and then we have an, Atl an Atlantean attack uh, against Ulm here. This is, yeah, probably taking the fort, uh, which we expect will be empty. Yep, and it is indeed empty. This is bad news for us, um, because this is right on our border, and, you know, we have some yetis and some archers and some mages. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to have to think about this one. We we're, were hoping this army would take some attrition. Uh, and it does actually lose a surprising number of mages here. That's kind of painful. Uh, I guess Ulm does get, uh, yeah, crossbowmen on the walls. And Atlantis's mages are not particularly well armored, so you know, always a risk when you're storming with lightly armored mages. So that's good news, uh, but still not not enough. <laughs> so we have some unexpected events. Uh, let's see. Right, we're heating up Raga. That's actually not unexpected. It is always a little painful to do this because I mean, this is a significant amount of population to lose. Uh, and you know, we are hoping to take this location. So you know, one turn of this not such a big deal, but repeated turns really is going to cut into the potential spoils. On the other hand, there will be no spoils uh, if we don't take it. So, you know, heating it up from cold three, I think is is necessary, but still painful. Uh, we actually get a good event here, a little bit of extra gold. That's very nice. Let's see. We lose some dominion in a location. Not that big a deal. Uh, and we burn a fairy court. We get two uh, air gems in return for some really awful changes to our scale. Not worth it, but it's in a desert, so... Not the end of the world as far as events go. We patrol out an Atlantean scout, and that's definitely nice. Not sure where this is on top of one of our forts in all likelihood. Uh, speaking of forts, we do finally breach uh, that Atlantean fort that we've been sieging. And of course, we do have Raga locked down, but it's just a tyrant, so we're not going to break that. And we finally get a hero. Uh, and this is actually a great role, Iron Will. This increases our magic resistance, so I can't complain about this. This is pretty much exactly what we need. And I'll catch you guys after the jump. All right. This is the situation and what we did about it. Uh, Atlantis definitely did not behave as I expected them to, which is usually the mark of a good player and or a bad sign. Uh, so it looks like they have decided to give this fortification up uh, from our scrying. There's basically nothing in here, and we can see that you know enormous relieving army we were expecting to materialize has disappeared. Uh, so this is potentially a trap. Atlantis does have enough astral that they could theoretically gateway some stuff in, though I do think it's a bit of a reach for them, so I'm not expecting that, but I'm also not willing to storm with nothing. Uh, so we're going to kind of split here. We're leaving behind some stuff, not too much, some mouflon that we're going to send in real quick, uh, a little bit of fire elemental support uh, along with our profit. So a decent number of our more quick troops with a little bit of magic support should be able to handle, you know, a moderately sized trap. Uh, of course, that does mean that that won't be present for what potentially will be a battle uh, down to the south here. So I think what happened is this is the uh, this is the force that was just to the north of where we're sieging, and I think what we're going to be the reinforcements have either split uh, potentially like into this location, or I think more likely just all of them went into Raga. Uh, which is good news in the sense that, you know, we have delayed the movement of a pretty significant chunk of Atlantis's forces, though only temporarily. Definitely not willing to sit and potentially have everything collapse onto this fellow. 
Uh, we're sending him south, which in retrospect, I think may have been a mistake. Uh, I think, you know, he could probably take what's here, though we do see some forgiving fathers. And I think it's really the forgiving fathers and those throne mages that we need to be mo most careful of, right? We can see the stack uh, where we just lost a tyrant, right? A lot of forgiving fathers, though. Happily, it looks like a lot of the infantry that survived retreated. So Atlantis is going to have to uh, reconstitute this. Uh, anyway, stacks of Forgiving Fathers are their Astral Mages, and that's really the most dangerous thing. Uh, so we do see some of them here, so definitely some risk. Uh, but I think the larger risk is if this fellow gets pushed, if Atlantis chooses to move back on top of Raga, uh, then it's pretty likely that we'll end up being forced to fight in Raga, which means potentially we have to fight everything, which is what we're trying to avoid. Versus if we shift it off to the left here, much more likely to not run into that situation. On the other hand, uh, if Atlantis chooses to attack forward instead, uh, then we would probably cut the retreat routes and completely destroy the force. So this is the riskier and more aggressive move. Like, we'll see how it goes. We are moving out, you know, the majority of our army here uh, to try to receive what, you know, Atlantis is sending. I do think if they move forward to attack this, uh, they'll die. Though Atlantis is, like, they're very aware of where we are and what our movement options are, so I think it's pretty unlikely that they're going to attack forward like this. Uh, I think an army in a location where they're much more likely to push forward, right, this is the fortification that they just talk, took off of Ulm, um, and, I mean, you know, we'll see, right? There is an Ulmish flag here bordering it. Obviously, like, Ulm is a going concern for Atlantis, so potentially this will move forward uh, against Ulm. On the other hand, there's an unfortified unforted throne right here that they're going to want to defend that's right on the border and you know they're not that far from our capital right if they choose to march uh so we're sending forward a, a little bit of stuff just like some flaming arrows with our garbage archers we do have a good amount of province defense here uh just because you know we don't want to lose it to this little raiding group uh, because I do think this is where we're going to want to make our stand this is a decent province defense type so you know as far as pd dumps go that's one of the better options, um, and it's easily reinforced. Uh, so we do have a tyrant available. We're sending him over, so he'll join uh, in this defense uh, along you know, with our yetis and whatever else we've recruited here. We do have a decent number of mages here, so I think we can absolutely make a defense in this location, though I do think it'll be a challenge. Offensively will be a little trickier, uh, but potentially, right, if we don't go after Raga, we could just try to shift and go after this throne. But I think there's probably too many Atlantean troops over, like even if we choose not to attack Raga, we're going to have to eliminate some forces over here before we can realistically transfer over enough stuff uh, that we can make a play for this throne and, and hold it you know, more permanently. Uh, so that covers the majority of the north. Uh, in the south, we are mostly defensive. Obviously, right, we lost one of our raiders here. We are patrolling. Uh, we got a, like an air elemental communion uh, along with probably flaming arrows, I would think. Yeah, flaming arrows for this fellow uh, along with our province defense. Like, we'll see. Certainly against like this fully formed army, you know, I don't think that would be a good idea. But, you know, we do see some retreats that could potentially turn into a raiding group. Like, I think if Atlantis just threw you know, what they had in these two provinces against our fort here, we might actually kill a bunch of mages. So kind of hoping that they attack and, you know, we can squish some Atlanteans uh, with some air elementals. Uh, but certainly if Atlantis reinforces and reconstitutes reconstitu this army, you know, we're going to have to think about how we're going to defend that fort. Uh, but we will not be defending it uh, with this tyrant who we are going to move forward. We can see Atlantis has like a number of counter raiding groups out, right, to try to prevent us penetrating. And we are just going to hold here. Because uh, not feeling particularly confident, you know, you can see we do not have full gem reloads for this group. Uh, logistics failure is strong in this location. Um, but, you know, as long as we can hang out and, you know, force these kind of counter raiding groups to come out and try to defend, like, these size of groups, I think, are going to be great news for our tyrants. So hopefully our tyrants can clean out, or, well, just one tyrant. We are moving our other, our hero tyrant from underwater, uh, so he should be able to join in this fun in a couple of turns. Um, but they can hopefully, you know, clear out a lot of these defending groups and wreak a lot of havoc. And, you know, hopefully this group can hang out. We are doing a bit more recruiting, and, you know, we're starting to get to a point... I don't have a ton of siege strength but you know we at least have enough siege strength maybe in a turn or two when we combine it with this raiding group that we might actually be able to go after this throne fortification 
Uh, but of course, that definitely depends. You know, we can see a pretty large force starting to build up here in Atlantis. And like certainly if Atlantis combined a lot of these groups, we would have to respond to that army instead. I think that covers the majority of what we're up to. We are uh, trying to recall the uh, goddess, uh, somebody. There's a couple guys somewhere. Uh, yeah, here they are. We have three of our cap-only mages uh, recalling our god, which is a lot of research to be losing. Uh, we don't really have any mages, I guess, or sorry, priests. Uh, potentially another reason to invest in the Phlegrin priests, right? We've, we've talked about them before. I'm not totally sold on them for their unrest reduction, but, you know, having a stack of priests is nice, uh, you know, to bring your pretender back, especially if you're going to go with kind of a monster build like this. You're probably going to lose your pretender at some point. Um, on the other hand, that would be another temple that we would have had to build, you know, somewhere that's undefended. And again, with the money and then not having it, Always trade-offs. Uh, in this case, you know, we're going to get our god back slowly and at the cost of research. In terms of what other people are up to, uh, it does look like Vettiheim's position, I wouldn't say it's collapsing, but, you know, it isn't going as well this turn. Uh, but this could just be raiding, right? Raiding goes back and forth, uh, probably of, you know, more more danger. Uh, Marignan is sitting on top of this fort and has it cracked. Uh, so that's not a good sign. I'm not sure why I didn't send my scout in to observe that. Apologies. Uh, probably was interested to see if, you know, Vettiheim's capital was unlocked. Like, we don't have sight down here at all. Uh, and of course, that's not the only fort that Marignan is on, uh, though this looks like it's right a single crossbowman. So, you know, either something got beaten or Marignan decided to pull back. Uh, and of course, you know, Miklan, again, isn't really up to anything, which is like somewhat dangerous for us. You know, we do see a ton of just slave units building up here. These aren't particularly dangerous in combat, um, but you know, they did cancel their nap with us not that long ago. So, you know, depending on how this war with Atlantis goes, like we misstep, like Miklin is not really doing anything right now. Uh, and they could certainly jump in on us, right? They, they have expressed some interest in the past. So, yeah, we don't really have a lot of information on what's going on with them. Really could use more scouts, but again, with them not having money. On the other hand, they do also share a significant border with Ulm, right? So they may just be biding their time and waiting to see, like, you know, does Felegra misstep and lose a ton of stuff? You know, or is Ulm misstep and lose a ton of stuff? And then they're going to jump in at that point. Um, on the other hand, right, I mean, you know, no love lost between them and Vettiheim. Yeah, they could go a lot of different directions. So, yeah, I think that more or less covers turn 50.